Well, hello everybody. Glad to be here with you. Happy Monday. So glad to be here for another Awakened Sales Facebook Live here on Rock Your Sacred Purpose Facebook group. For those of you that might be tuning in uh, in, in various ways to this uh, in the future. So we do these Facebook Lives again every Monday at 3 p.m. Central, at least up till now. Okay, that's currently what's happening. And look forward to talking today about specifically relationships. Uh, something that I haven't talked directly about uh, here uh, as, as it relates to uh, Awakened Sales. And I talked about relationships in, in the way I will today, probably ever here in the Facebook group, as far as I can remember. Maybe, maybe I have. I don't know. So... Uh, yeah, which it, it, kind of the foundation of everything really is relationships, of course. And so I really felt like today would be a great time to go ahead and for us to to talk about uh, relationships. Now, when I'm talking about relationships, when it has to do with, you know, sales and awakening and everything, we're always talking about first our own relationship with life itself. Uh, found, foundationally, when we're having issues in our life, it's an issue we're having with our connection with source. So I think that's like an orienting principle. So I'm going to get into that orienting principle and how that connects with everything and the different messes we sometimes get ourselves in with uh, in our relationship with source and then therefore everything else uh, in a moment. And then I'll do some the usual group scanning, some individual scans of people around that want those and some channel messages and all that kind of fun today. Okay. All right, so yeah, so let's talk about the fundamental issue is comes again with our connection with source. Now, some people might say, "No, I got a great relationship with source. It's in my relationship with money that sucks." <laughs> uh, no, I've got a great relationship with source. I, it's my relationship with my mom that isn't so great. Uh, but I would say that no, it's it's all interconnected. So you you might think you have a great relationship with source. And that it may not be as strong as you think. And it, it gets tested because everything emanates from source. Everything is source or God or, you know, the great spirit or whatever name you want to use. So everything we're interacting with is that relationship with that. That's why everybody says when you're looking at things that are showing up in your life is that they're all mirrors, right? Your relationships are your mirrors. And then when we see something coming up to look at it as that mirror. So when we're looking at an opportunity to do marketing or sales, we're looking to do what? We're looking to nourish other beings, right? The people we're trying to help in the world, whoever your ideal clients are, whoever your tribe is. But we're also looking to nourish ourselves first and foremost, really, because that is that is what's going on. It's like, first and foremost, you are fundamentally addressing your own your own self first in everything, whatever you do, you're fundamentally really addressing your own relationship with source and yourself first. And so when you start there, you can't really go wrong with anything you do in terms of marketing and sales because you're always foundationally coming from that space. It doesn't have to do um, with you. You're in a, I'm in an interaction a relationship with you totally, yet the, the, the deeper real relationship is mine with source itself and how that interacts with you and how you're showing up in my life is that aspect of myself that I need to work with, right? So how that's important again is when we go to we go to put out a, a Facebook post or an email or we send a message to someone, reaching out to someone, are we just looking to be transactional and just throw something out there and, and you know, hope that they'll, they'll grab it, you know, they're gonna grab this thing um, and is that is the way we're communicating ourselves through through marketing and sales the way we want to be having a relationship with source in ourselves? You know, I want you to start looking at it that way. Um, you know, for me, again, growing up in sales, so to speak, uh, in, in business, I uh, at some level have been about relationships for sure, always. Okay, relationships is always. A part of it. Of course, I, I care. Of course, I, I love everybody and all that stuff. Universal loves in my chart, after all. Uh, and yet, I think that 
as much as I cared and as much as that was still there, that there was still a transactional level of my being coming in just saying, you know, okay, get tr these transactions done. And there is that aspect of relationships, but to always look at all these different things in the context of the greater relationship with life itself. Like I just had someone, you know, signing up for a program and I says, yeah, you know, I'm intending together with you. You're going to do great. You're going to get new sales and all this stuff. And I also says, you know, you're going to have fun and you're also going to learn things about yourself and you're going to grow in your relate. I didn't say these words. What I wanted to say was you're going to grow in your relationship with life itself. You're going to deepen in that area. And that's, that's, that's what matters, you know, and then. If you have a great relationship with life itself, everything will grow from there. When people say you have money blocks, you know, I can tell you again, as someone that took people through whole courses on money and, you know, money shadows and everything, the issue isn't really exactly money. It's uh, foundationally, it's like, what's your relationship with life there too? So when you're in a relationship with someone else and you're, looking to serve them you're coming from that authentic place of 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 connection into the oneness sphere into through the sacred heart and you're 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 really holding a powerful stand for them hopefully even if it's gently but it's powerful and it's rooted in you when you're having those sales conversations for example you want to be rooted you want to feel grounded a lot of times we're just in we get insecure like Again, I'm just saying from my own experience over the years, there are times when you get insecure and you're like, I, well, I hope they come on board. Oh boy, I need a transaction. I, um, at some level with it, when you're honest, you know, some part of you is thinking about this and I have this job to get done. I, I need a sale or, or I don't want to have to feel that way. So I'm just going to be totally relational and forget about the transaction, uh, aspect. And then the sales aren't happening because you're, you're too, what can I say? You're not directive enough. You're not taking charge. You're just kind of buddy-buddy with them only, and you're not taking charge of the situation. So when you're being the leader for your tribe, a relationship you want to nurture that's most empowering for you and your tribe is for you to show up as being authentic, but also as being that leader. Like I'm, I, I'm leading the way. I'm standing in my power. I'm leading the way for that, those things that we yearn for. My tribe, you know, yearns for deepening of awakening, claiming their deeper gifts, increasing their, their sales, doing world changing things in the world, whatever that may be for each, each being doing their healing work, their coaching, their incredible world changing spiritual entrepreneur businesses, whatever it may be, but that there's that calling. So I'm here saying, yeah, things need to change. The way things happen, and we need this service or this product, or we this wants to happen. Let's get the, the the copy download. Let me channel your copy. Let me help you with your sales process with your team, or for you individually, or whatever might be the case. And let's get that down, and let's get the the strength of the relationships going with your team or your JVs going stronger and better. Who else do you need on your team? Who needs to be put into different roles on your team, like what, looking at all the relationships. So when I come in, I'm helping advise those things, but these are things that you want to be considering throughout and you want to be thinking about if you haven't hired people yet, like what kind of, if you're starting to look at that, what kind of relationship do I want? What's my relationship with source? Therefore, when it's strongest, what, when, when I'm foundationally rooted in my, my, the essence of my being, I know it sounds all very, kind of esoteric to some of you, but like when you're, you're feeling connection, when you're fully present, you're fully in your power, who's the best VA assistant for your business? Do you even need one? If you, you know, I suggest you have one, um, uh, as you grow, uh, at all. And for many of you, just to get started, you need that because of the technical side of things online, but if you have that, you okay, what is exactly what I want? And then specifying that, right? Specifying that. And then, being open, you know, I just have found like in relationships, uh, in, in business. And then I, I, a great story, you know, particularly too, is with, with Deb, my wife is like, I was had all these prayers. I did. I had, the, I, I had like most of us do. Um, I don't know. I had the list. Okay. This is what I would be looking for in a partner. And then my partner was not divorced and no kids yet. 
Um, well, I took Deb out of the picture. She wasn't showing up when I was online looking for a match, right? So, but when I open up the parameters, when I stop saying it's got to be this way, and it really got more tuned in, and I started realizing, what if I could be okay with that part of myself that judges those things? Like, oh, you've already been there. I don't know then about all that, and I don't know if I want to deal with that situation. What if I were willing to be present with that? You know, and and are we doing that when we're going to uh, maybe serve certain aspects of our tribe and therefore our being, right? So, so when you think about like I'd love to serve millionaires, like do you have judgments towards millionaires or deca millionaires or whatever level, like where you get a little weird, like oh well they're probably like this or that, and you've got concepts, maybe that could be your ideal tribe. But you've got so much judgments about that within yourself. Like if you were one of those people, like you even judge yourself, man, isn't it enough enough? Come on now, right? So how can you, what do you need to do to take care of that relationship and nurture yourself? Could, is it possible to nurture yourself better being a decamillionaire than a, than a millionaire? Or is it better to, can you nourish yourself better being a millionaire? Can you feel that vibration? Can you allow that vibration in you? Because it's not the money that is corrupting, it's the ideas around the money that are corrupting, right? It's not the idea that's corrupting, it's the ideas around the money that could potentially be corrupting. Okay, I'm all about generosity and nurturing myself, and nurturing myself feels like not only taking care of my foundation of my being through these things I like to obtain through the flow of cash and circulating love and abundance with others, but it also feels like, you know, giving to this huge thing to my church or an organization or charities or whatever, like um, saving, saving for retirement if you want to retire someday. Or, it's probably a good idea to consider retirement, even if you don't think you'll ever retire. Um, all these things, w what relationship do you want with all that? What nurtures you best and how do you approach it? Like a lot of people get into, again, um, have tried and maybe you're one of them is you try to just focus and just try to make your business happen and you, you did all the tasks and then nothing happened. Like you didn't get the clients. You didn't, you didn't see the, um, success with the, the, the product launch or, um, whatever it is that you're trying to share. And then you wonder, well, what happened? Well, then you have to look at your relationship with how you were approaching things. Are you in relationship that's aligned with the nature of your being and the na your particular nature too, like who you are. So when I'm scanning you, like I can see who you are. Uh, even people that use other systems, I usually give that information anyway. Like, okay, like human design or when I see those things in people anyway, I'm like, okay, this is, this is how I see you. This is how you could operate better in marketing and sales. These are the things that you want to be considering. And if you're not in right relationship with that within in yourself, you're operating for what? Con conditioning. You know, you're something, a conditioned self. Like my chart, like if you go to human design, if you don't go <laughs> energy scanning, I'd be energy scanning myself or from one of my students or something. But um, if you go to human design, it shows in my chart that I don't actually have a strong willpower center, right? So I don't have a strong will center. I'm, I'm a Zen guy. I'm a Zen guy. And, and yet I've had a, a interesting rocky relationship with that because it's, I always felt like I was judged for being more laid back, um, appreciated and loved for that, but also like, well, he's really laid back, he's really nice, but he's not accomplishing a whole lot. Like, now others may not have said it, but like, that's what was going on, what I ended up hearing, right? Or I'm not smart enough or, or something because I'm not showing up getting things done. So my fundamental way of wanting to be with life is to be. If you resonate with that, like say hallelujah, you know, I'd love to hear that. But like that, that's fundamentally who I really am. Now I could I can I can go into work 
crazy workman mode and but it doesn't sustain itself I, I tried it in my life I've gone through spurts of weeks months or even years you know being more a little more in that energy and you can do it for a while but then eventually you know more and more stress anxiety piles up and and um, you're not happy you know you're constantly flying off the handle because you're not being yourself right so then it affects your relationships with everything else so fundamentally, how are you with your relationship with life itself? You feel like life is giving you a bunch of crap to deal with, and so you're judging life for giving you the crap you have to deal with? Or are you like, I know there's a pony here, you know, like more of that mindset. Uh, like I was told when I was going through graduate school, hey, you probably can't even be a therapist. Like I was going for being a clinical psychology therapist, you know, through my, it was just a master's program. It was a, a P, full PhD, but... Um, they're like, you're amazing at tuning in and assessing, basically, is what they were saying. You're amazing. Oh, we don't know if you could be a therapist, though. Man, you're really different. You know, you're weird. And so not being understood is like, a, like an ongoing situation for me. So when I judge that, I could rebel. I could say, that's it. Screw everybody. Therefore, you know, this is a... you. Society's giving me this crap, and I'm bringing this crap to you. You know, that's how people get in these bad relationships, or they get passive uh, aggressive. The, we, again, we eat too much, we drink we, uh, too much, or we do drugs, or, or we start being very passive aggressive in our relationships, and that can translate into our businesses. So we're wondering why our business isn't taking off, but at the same time, nobody knows it, but we're we're spending like half our day like um, on other things like obsessing over something uh, it could be social media stuff it could be it could again be alcoholism it could be um, you're obsessed with uh, I don't know like uh, if this would apply here but porn or whatever it is like you're obsessed with these things it's taken up oh, hey it's only an hour a day or it's only three hours a day or it's only whatever it is but yet we're, we're utilizing it to try to soothe ourselves because we don't fundamentally feel like we're nurtured, we're loved, we're taken care of, and that we can be ourselves. So I guess what I'm saying with relationships is when you're being yourself, then what's ideal? When I'm being myself, then what's ideal in my relationships with my partner, if you have one, or with the partner I'd love to be with, um, is there is there can I can I accept and even embrace more aspects of my partner to be or my partner that I already have? Can I embrace more aspects of my client to be or, or the clients I already have? Can I embrace more of that? Can I love that part of myself more? Uh, you know, and the list goes on and on, right? The, your team, um, all these different aspects of our relationships. Now, when things get toxic, again, it, it, part of it would be as if we are trying not to be ourselves. So for me, I'll get toxic if I'm like, that's it. I'm working, I'm working 60 hours this week and I'm on calls all day long. And I, that will be toxic for me. That would be bad, a bad, bad relation, being a, bad, a poor relationship with, with, with who I am, the circuitry of who I am. That'd be a poor relationship. So for me to, and I, I, I could see temp, temporary gains maybe, or just see the same uh, amount of um, results in terms of even outward, like business and clients. Um, maybe I see a temporary increase, right? Wow, that's great. But then do it for a few years, right? Um, so what, how, when you're being in the right relationship with yourself and with source, and then when you're just, what is the right relationship with each thing in your life? Like, what is that right relationship? A lot of the right relationship is just letting go and letting everything be. Because the more you come up with rules and regulations and concepts around the way, th you, th way you think things should be, the more lim limited you really are because your energy gets tied up into it. And now um, that can be limiting. I know a lot of people think it's good because... But I'm taking care of that, and then I'm taking care of that, and then I got that done, and then I got that done. And uh, and at the end of the day, you're like, God, oh, so 
wow, thank God this day is over. <laughs> but I feel really good. I got a lot done. <laughs> you remember that. You got a lot done. So you feel good about that. Wow, that's a lot. And you do it the next day, the next day, the next week, the next month, the next year. And you're doing all these things. And it's just like, what am I doing? Or we can be in a relationship with ourselves where we have, we're, we're, we're meant to be in uh, generative actions. And that is part of who we are. That is a part of our circuitry. And we've got to go get her, but we've pulled it way back because we got too toxic with it. And now we just say, hey, I just want to be. Hide, hide that list. I just want to be. That's all I care about. I just want to be. And that's kind of kind of who I just am, really. I'm just uh, more on the Zen side than on the crazy action side. I got a little fireballer in me, but that just enough to make that difference in people's lives, in my life, really, right? My life that intersects with other people's lives. So just enough, just enough. But again, if I try to try to bring more of something I just think I need into the relationship I have with myself and therefore others and everything, then, then I start to suffer. So how are your relationships with, with yourself, with source, um, maybe with your angels and guides and all that stuff, you know, um, or, and you know, the people in your life, the people in your business, your clients, your team, your, then your family, you know, if you've got all these, you have toxic relationships. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about that. If you've got toxic relationships, why are they toxic? Are they toxic because you're not accepting enough of the situation or is it that you're there to learn a lesson from what's happening in this relationship, but that you're not meant to actively keep being with it, you know, going on a merry-go-round with it? Okay, once you learn the lesson, the relationship's over. You know, like, once you learn, once you learn, the le there's, there are relationships in our lives, I believe, we're there to learn a lesson and we're meant to move on. We might meet that person for like five minutes or less, right? They, they were there to teach you a lesson, and then you move on. But what happens a lot of times, or, or, or for five years, or for 50 years, or whatever it is, but you're met, usually it's not the longer term relation, but you're just, that it's just like one lesson, like a quick lesson. But like you're learned there to learn whatever your, your, your lessons are, and then you're meant to move on. But a lot of times, like when my first spiritual teacher talked about this with me, and he's so, I think he was more right on than I realized. Um, that when a relationship is meant to end, we're meant to end it and not be actively involved in it anymore. But often we're not willing to do that. We want to hang on to it because it's meant so much to us up until then. Or we want to say, we can make it work. We can make it work or I can make it work or whatever. I'm going to make this relationship work. I'm going to make this relationship work with money. I'm going to make it work. And, and then it's not that you're meant to divorce money, but maybe you need to divorce your old relationship with money. Oh, money, you got to work hard for it. Okay, is that the kind of relationship you want with money? <laughs> uh, relationship, oh, yeah. I, it's all conditional. It's like if, I'm, if I do all these things, then, they're gonna, then they give me the money. If not, then I resent that. I want to be unconditionally loved and receive money. And then I'll unconditionally give, right? Like we'd love, we'd love that idea. I bet most of you like unconditionally, just the money comes in unconditionally. Just, and it can be that way. The funny thing is it can be that way, but we don't see it that way. So then we don't experience it that way. Okay. Unconditionally, I'm just saying the money's pouring in and I'm just pouring out the, the, um, pouring out the blessings by being in my presence first and foremost, and then letting the actions flow from there. And I, I'm just assuming that the money's pouring in. So if you're looking to make another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100,000 dollars a month or whatever it is, you're just assuming and expect it to happen. A lot of times we've been taught this stuff in like LOA, right? Like the, the, the basic stuff um, that we're to expect the results. Like we put an uh, order into the waiter, they say, or waitress. And yet when the thing seems bigger. We don't tend to do that. We're like, waiter, waiter, can you please bring me the soup? Oh my God, I really need that soup. <laughs> you know, but what if you were more like when you go, go to the restaurant, you know, like, Hey, all right. Can you bring me another 
$30,000. Okay. Just assume that, that it's already said yes. I, I forget someone recently, um, I think it was just somebody I was meeting with maybe, or I forget if it's somebody I know, or I, I forget. Somebody was saying like, uh, yeah, I think it's somebody, somebody, oh, actually it's somebody who was thinking about working with me and probably will in the future. And they were talking about, I've got my banker and spirit. And I just asked, I just tell them, hey, bring me this much money. And, and, this, and she just expects it to happen. And then it does, right? Because she's expecting it. She's just expecting that to happen while she goes about doing, on her merry way, doing what she wants to do. And then the money comes. So the amount she's willing to ask from that banker may vary then based on some of her limiting beliefs though, but it's the same for all of us. Is more always better? And that's always an interesting question. Is more always better? The idea is more is always better. Hmm. Can you handle your relationship with one person? Well, okay, great. Now, what if we, we add another relationship? Okay, I can, I can manage it. If I, or I'm doing well with that. But if we had 100 relation, new relationships, whoa, that's too much, right? I think it's the same with money. Can you, ha can you handle it, so to speak? What does it require for you to be able to handle more money, so to speak, to be with more money? I, I think one of the things is let it be easy. You know, to let it be easy. Let it be really easy. Allow yourself to be with what it is that you say you want to be in relationship with. I want to be in relationship with $100,000 more per month and five more new DECA millionaire clients. You know, charging $20,000 um, more uh, per month or whatever. You know, I don't care, but you know, I'm just making stuff up here <laughs> as far as numbers go, but you know what I'm saying? Like what kind of relationships want to be? So I can't over overemphasize enough. Like what kind of relationship do you want to be with anything in order for you to feel the peace that you're looking for to experience heaven on earth and to experience the kind of results you want in the way that you want to experience them in an awakened way. So I'll just leave it there. I think you can Catch my drift. Um, Lois says, hi, Daniel. Good stuff. Hey, good to see you, Lois. Hello, hello. And I can do some group scanning with you all around um, relationships and see what wants to be said about that. Just tune in, look channeling or whatever. And then if there's individual scans that want to happen today, we can do that from there. Yeah. Time to let go of an old relationship with money or a person or thing, all that sort of stuff. So just, just, if there is, then I want you to write it down. Like, okay, I'm going to get to scanning in a second. I, guess I just got this other thing I wanted to share. So it's like, it's like anything else. You'll just notice it. Like, like I've got my paper over here written with like the things I'm going to do when I go to the gym. Well, today I didn't even finish what I got on there because I just felt stale with it. I just felt like, it's time for a change with this workout thing right now. Right? So to, today's the last day I'm going to do any of it. And then I'm going to innovate it because I'm not liking my relationship with my workout. So you'll get the, it, you won't feel as joyful anymore. Something won't feel right. Then your relationship needs to change with it in some form, shape, uh, form or shape, right? So that's what you want to do when you, you notice things are, have gotten stagnant or toxic. Okay. Anyway, I felt like I needed to nail that one a little bit more. Okay, let's tune into the group around relationships with me here. That would be helpful. Pure love guides your way. Um, let me I'm look at the I look at the chakras, the throat ch chakra, the power center. Hmm. Feel the shutdowns coming in, in here. Whoa. Okay. Um I just see like being puppeted, like we're gonna make you do this. You, you don't, you can't choose. <laughs> Relationship is, we tell you what to do, you do it. You know, like there's some of that going on, and then part of you is like, you're okay, and other part is you're like, screw you, I'll never do that. Yeah. Okay, so let's see.
Hmm. So when I see when you're standing in your power, when we stand in our power and our throat and our, our, our power, so we feel that connected energy. So how to bring that in in these areas where we're, we're get into fear, or we get into, you know, fighting things and like a dog, <laughs> we get like that, like inwardly or outwardly or both, right? With, with relationships with anything. So instead of doing that, um, or if we feel like something's controlling us, people or energies or people on the planet, we get into that lightened state and we allow ourselves to be present in our true power and our power center and our throat chakra. What happens is that energy that's almost like a bully, it's like, you better do this or that, or, you know, um, it's just like, oh, you're not available. It goes somewhere else. It's just like, oh, we got to go somewhere else. We don't have any dominion really over you anymore. That's what it does. It's just like, oh, I got to go somewhere else. So it looks for somewhere else to go. Where, where, where else can I create more awakening? Like I, 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 that's what I always say is the, the, the dark players on the planet, like they're really just there awakening people. They're just doing their own way. They're doing it their way, right? They're strong awakeners. Many, you're connected. Oh, well, that's not working. Okay. Where else do we need to go then? Who, who's who's a taker? Who's taken? You know, and then they go to those that are more vulnerable and weaker. But if you want to, like what they say about the virus and everything, right? I mean, it's the same thing. Like, uh, um, a live video might get flagged for even saying that, right? It's crazy. But it's yeah. See, it's <laughs> it just makes me laugh. It's like okay, yeah, this is exactly what I'm talking about. No, you can. It was mosey on along, like I don't, I don't even need that attention. So, but yeah, just like um, once we're in a in sense of um, connection, which does allow you to be calm, impervious, um, in a sense to, to that at that time, then it can just move on. Then the relation, we're not in that relationship anymore. I don't need that anymore. I've learned a lesson. Okay. Stand in my power, stand in my voice and authority to speak up and to show up the way that I want to and know that it's just about me feeling good about myself and taking charge of my life in the way that I want to. Never blaming anyone else or anything outside of me for why I can't experience what I want. Well, I've been told you've got to do this and do that in order to be able to travel the world or whatever. What if none of that's true? How do you really know? Like you say, there's laws, there's this, there's that. How do we know? Do we, how, how, how can you absolutely know? Can you absolutely know anything? And the truth is you can't. That's where the liberation comes in. I can't absolutely know that. What if there's a way for it to happen exactly the way that I would prefer? And or maybe you're meant to embrace some of these things and get over it. Maybe there's a benefit to that. Maybe I need to embrace um, the idea that things are going to get uncomfortable in my life, whether it's like the, how I'm going to have to travel or how I'm going to be showing up with people. Um, and just, you know, there's certain things where definite clear. If you have reactivity, I always say, if you have reactivity to something, um, then you're, you, that's not your real truth. That's not your real deeper truth, right? It's not, it can't be reactive. So once you come to a place of you know, equanimity, um, that connection, that connective place, then you're in true relationship with source and then you can choose like, oh, well, clearly this is what the right choice is. Um, I think I'll just stay home, you know, for now. The time feels right, then I'll take that trip. Um, that feels rounded, feels clear for me. Okay, great. Um, Okay, well, I think I'm gonna bite their head off the next time they say that. Oh my God, why is that? Okay, so if we tap into that. Reactivity towards others. You better not say that. I'm gonna rip them up when they say that. I'm gonna yell at them. I'm a loving goddess, but I'll tell you what, you say those things, I'm oh, coming after you, I'll get you. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, so let's look at that. Mm hmm. There's the back of the head. Mm hmm. Your 
afraid you're going to get hurt. If your fight's going to bop you over the head, you're going to be controlled or killed or die. That's all that is. All that. I don't, you, I'm the love of God, but I'll get you if you say this. <laughs> I'll get you. Okay, so you're afraid you're going to die. You're afraid you're going to get bopped over. You're going to be run over, taken advantage of maybe, or <sighs> something be taken away from you. All right, but what if that's not true? And you, don't, you really don't know if that's true. They're just concepts. They're just ideas. If I can just let all those ideas go and be at peace with those ideas, not that I, that I believe them or not. I could just be at peace with these ideas. Now, how can I be with that? And they show up in my life and I react to Yeah, I still want to get them. Why do you want to get them? Uh, I just want to love them now. Okay, good. That's better. Urgh, I feel anger in my roof, my power center. Ah, you hurt me. Okay, let's see what that's about. Laugh and kill them with kindness is the message I'm getting. Just, hey. Hey, love you, love you, love you, love you, sister, love you, man. I see you. I see you. What I see in you is just, it's just be it's beautiful. I see him like a shimmering light. Shimmering light. Presence them as the, the light beings they are. Feel them in your heart. Feel the connections. I love you. Your things have been can be released now. I love you. Okay, as you love them, you love yourself. And now you both can go free. So like this whole thing, like what's coming up is again, with political divides and you, you, you're fine with this, you're fine with that. You don't agree with it, but then there's just one issue or two issues or three issues or, or it can be other things, whatever, like um, things that just drive you crazy about ah, people you've hired or people that want to hire you and then they work with you and they got their, their they, they, they love you until one doesn't and then they, these things come up or whatever. Okay, send them peace and love. So just sending that to you. Okay. Hey, let's just have a cup of tea. Let's just sit down and have a cup of tea. If you truly are sincere about that, that's exactly either the way it, the relationship will show up. Like, it'll just, hey, we could just sit here and be at peace with each other. Or the relationship will just disappear. Like, you won't have that dynamic anymore. Or that person won't show up anymore. Because they don't need to. You're at peace with it now. It can be this easy. It can be this fast. Just... In the exact time that we just did that, it can be already done now. No need to continue. If we say yes, it can be so, yes. Okay, so there's some elements there that are cleaning up. Thank you. Okay, well, uh, anyway, so that little piece came up uh, for me to scan and work with energetically. For myself, always listen. Whenever we're doing this work, I don't care who the energy healer is. If there are, they're all working on themselves. Um, so, working on myself too, so to speak. Just using some terminology there, and then I could do some individual scans, like, or if you have a specific question, like, around this subject. This is a big subject, right? A kind of really big subject, but. If you have a question or just want an ener some energy scanning around this sort of subject, let me know. Just say energy scan, please, down below. My wild self, my hair's bowing out there. <laughs> okay, well, I don't see any uh, requests today. Okay. All right, folks. If there aren't any requests, then I'll just share... Um, Maybe some channeled messages. Okay. Okay. Got 
Archangel Michael and Jesus around here. They're all here. Hello. <laughs> the usual gang. I don't know, something like that. Um, usual gang of beings. Okay. Feels like, yeah, boy, they're just all swirling right now. And that one is popping out. There's, I'm just hearing peace. Peace is the order of the day. Peace is the order of the day. Maintain and deepen a state of equanimity for all beings. Know the wonders of joy come to you when you're centered in this place, loving all through your sacred hearts. Come to rest, come to peace with yourself and all. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Archangel Betatron is just saying, charge and lead the way forward for the glorious things that you have to share. In one word, what are you here championing are you a champion for in one word there you go there's your there there's that word to center on then Re deepening relationship with source and everything with that one word thank you More money, sure. Here you go. They're saying, here you go. <laughs> we. Like this divine cash distribution center has been established. It can be established in you when you say yes right now. Thank you. You're receiving with easy flow. You receiving and giving. Yeah. Easy flow. Let it be easy. Let it be easy. Let it be easy. Be at peace and let it be easy. Oh, okay, well, I'm just kind of guided to say something from there. Okay, thank you. Really? Hmm. Um, I've been considering doing a meditation retreat for people online again. I've done different ones before, but... If I do one around purpose, money, and relationships, um, that'd be pretty cool, huh? Purpose, money, and relationships. Okay. Yeah, I have to double check my calendar. Maybe on the 5th and 6th of March. We'll double check our calendars. We'll be in touch. If anybody would like to experience a meditation retreat, focus on purpose, money, relationships, let me know. Um, yeah. Keep you posted on the 5th and 6th. We'll deepen into this deeper connection of peace and equanimity. Spreading ourselves and establishing deep awakening. A deeper, a deeper um, ability to receive everything and be in a great relationship with all life, including within all areas of your life and your business. If that sounds good, let me know. Just say, say yes. 
Not that's fine too. Um, I just guided to say that today, share that with you. It's been bubbling up, um, wanted to be announced today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, source. All right. So let's go ahead and let's end with a prayer. Take that nice deep breath then. In through your nose, up through your crown, up through your higher self, up to love, light, source, energy, up into the all and all. And as you exhale through your mouth, let this energy come back down through your higher self, down through your crown chakra, down through all your chakra, surface, body, through our field, down through your feet, down through your chakra, down to the core of the earth. As I sp speak these words and the I am, for everyone that listens to my voice, as I recognize God, love, life, source, spirit is all there is. I'm grateful that life is filled with magic and miracles for every aspect of my being and my life. I'm grateful to be centered in it and to say yes to the highest and greatest unfoldment of my being from a great relationship with who I truly am and allowing myself to know myself from the deeper place of who I truly am, allowing myself to let the notes of the infinite to flow through me with great sense of joy and fulfillment and childlike wonder of appreciating who I am and therefore who all are and all things are in my life. As I'm allowing that to unfold, I'm grateful to treasure each sacred moment in my heart, knowing everything's about that deeper relationship with the divine in every aspect of my life. So I'm grateful to feel it, sense it and know it and to appreciate it. Even within the sense of the transactions of life, I feel the sense of the sacred within all of it let it be most potent and powerful and let it be a big yes to feel that and to embody the power of the sacred in all. So I let it be so, I let it be done and let it um, resonate. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Okay. All right. Ha, ha. Guess you're getting your own messages now. <laughs> That'll be good. Meditation retreat. Enjoy the one around the holidays. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Lisa, for the feedback. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. And you too, uh, especially you, Lisa, seeing as you, you, you were uh, commenting on it. So, okay, everybody. Great being with you today. Uh, see you next week. Uh, lots of love to you all. Goodbye for now.